Carl Baker here. Today's video tutorial is on reclining bound angle pose. Sounds a bit complicated. It's also known as basking frog and you'll be able to see why when I demonstrate it. Now if you don't have a bolster I would use a couple of bath towels rolled up tied with um, you know a, a ribbon or a dressing gown cord or something or maybe sleeping bags in a sleeping bag holder you can get that nice and round but these bolsters are quite reasonable. Um, and you might want a cushion to pop your head on. Um, if you really want to release your hips, you could put a cushion either side of your knees, which I'll talk you through as well. Benefits of this pose, well, you're going to know as soon as you go into it. Opening up the hips and the pelvis, so very good for any menstrual dis um, issues. Um, menopause is very good for PMT, uh, heavy periods, because it opens up any congestion in the pelvic region. And also, therefore, will stretch out into the inner part of the hips, into the abductors. Um, Basically, you're going to find that you get a big stretch here at the front of the chest into the pectoral muscles, into the heart and the lungs, because your arms are eventually going to be coming behind you, which is not something they do very often. They're more often than not in front of you. So the fact that you're raised off the floor means that your arms will have to open and this will stretch out through here. So good for improving breathing, heart issues and posture. Now, it depends on how much you like your head to go back. You may want to release your head back quite away and not have such a thick cushion in which case you're going to get a stretch here for the throat again which is going to help improve your posture the flexibility of your neck and work into your thyroid okay so what you need to do is to sit your bottom on the edge of the bolster and then put the soles of your feet together and let your knees come out to the side so it's like the, the butterfly pose or cobbler's pose which is the horrible name for it then you're going to start to lower yourself down over this bolster trying to keep yourself straight on it and then you'll probably want just to have a little cushion there. If you're happy to let your head completely relax to the floor, you can, because you're going to get more of a stretch for your neck. But just because I'm talking to you, it'll be easier if I have my head on a cushion. So you might find that your knees are a lot closer together. That's fine. Gravity will eventually release them out. You can have your heels in a little closer if you prefer, or you can have your legs out to the side. If you want to get rid of that and just use the knees um, bent and the feet on the floor, you won't get the benefits of the pelvis, but you'll still get the benefits of the shoulder. So you want to make sure your neck feels nice and long, and hopefully it's in a straight line with the rest of the body. And then the arm position, really there's lots of variation. So you would start off with your arms out to the side at shoulder height, and what you would hope is eventually that the backs of your hands and your elbows would come to the floor. You could then experiment with taking those arms up a little higher, so I can still get the backs of my hands on the floor here, but I'm struggling to get my elbows down, and as I go up higher, I'm feeling a different stretch in my upper arms and shoulders. But what I'm looking for eventually is to have my hands up above me, still with my backs of hands on the floor, and to work my elbows down. Now, certainly many people that I see, their shoulders and their upper back are really tight, and their arms are way up here or way up here. That doesn't matter because gravity is going to send your arms down. It just depends how long you're prepared to stay here. If you stay here till Christmas, I guarantee you will get your hands back on the floor. And if I stay here till Christmas, I might get my elbows down today. One last variation is to bend the elbow and have a right angle there between the elbow and the back of the hand. So again, you can see here I can probably just get my hands down, but I'm struggling to get my wrists down and my elbows down. So for me, that's targeting into the rotator cuff of the shoulder here, which is one of my tight areas. So I can just hang here, and over the course of time, my hands will start to release down towards the floor. And I've got my fingers down already. And if you leave me here a bit longer, I'll probably start to get the backs of my hands down. This shoulder will always be a little tighter on me, because I had an injury on that a few years ago. But the longer I stay here, the more I can start to release. So you need to take some really deep, slow breaths here. You need to just relax your jaw. You can move your arms about. It really doesn't matter where they are as long as you feel your opening here across the chest. You can adjust the feet, as I've said, and just let those knees flop out. You want to put some cushions underneath your knees. That gives you something just to release against. So I would say a good five to ten minutes in this pose. If you could go for 20 minutes, that would be marvellous. But what you want to make sure you do is when you <coughs> excuse me, come out of it, you don't try and launch up at high speed. 
I would actually just roll off to the side. I'd always roll to the right hand side, just because that will promote deep breathing through the left nostril. And just stay there for a little while. And then very gently. And then slowly bring yourself back into sitting. What you might want to do just to finish off is to bring your knees up to your chest. And then just have a little rock from side to side. And just hug your knees in. So that's your reclining bound angle pose. Deeply restorative pose. Very, very beneficial. Any questions at all, don't hesitate to email me via my website, which is carolbaker, C-A-R-O-L-E-B-A-K-E-R.co.uk. And there's lots of other free video tutorials for you to play over at home. Namaste.